Hey music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. Be a part of our community, subscribe below so you can participate in our daily content. We'd love to have you. We also want to recognize our honorary producers in the description below. We've been doing that. Really appreciate their support. You can become an honorary producer as well. Click on our Patreon link to find out that's below. Now it's time for another episode of our show, Dose. The greatest duets of the rock and roll era. Last time we covered the powerhouse duet, I Knew You Were Waiting For Me by Aretha Franklin, the Queen, and George Michael. Oh, what a great one. Also, producer Narda Michael Walden was on that one. That was a number one hit in 87. Today, we're going to go back a little further to 78 for one of my favorite duets of the 70s, the top five hit, Whenever I Call You Friend. Between two of the greatest voices of any era, Kenny Loggins and Stevie Nicks. Kenny and Stevie's voices together are smoother than silk, which is why this song is not only one of the great duets of that time, it's also a Yacht Rock classic. And though Stevie is credited on the album track, uh, she was strangely not credited on the actual single, which makes Whenever I Call You Friend Kenny Loggins' first major solo hit. It's a fact. Whenever I Call You Friend was written by Kenny and another multi-platinum artist from that time, Melissa Manchester, I was able to get the lowdown from both of these amazing artists on the origin of the song. Here is Kenny Loggins and Melissa Manchester with the story. Whenever I call you friend. Let's talk about Whenever I Call You Friend, which you co-wrote it with Melissa Manchester and sang with Stevie. That was a melody that I originally I was saving for Michael McDonald. And um, the tweet of the devil. And I took it to Michael because it just seemed like something that Michael and I would write. And after I showed it to him, he says, I, I don't hear it. I don't, I don't get it. And at first, it was like getting punched in the stomach because I would have sworn it was a good song. And so the next day, I had a writing date with Melissa Manchester. Yeah, he came up to my house uh, because we kept running into each other at award shows because we were paired up to present. To present. And, uh, and he showed up and I sat at the piano and he sat with his guitar and he had this idea. I said, no, I don't know if this is any good, but I think it is. What do you think? And she went, yeah. <laughs> sat at the piano, worked it up, got the chorus to it. When we finished writing the song, he said goodbye and... He went off to his thing, and I had the cassette of our work session. And it's funny because he said that he presented the song to Mike McDonald, and Mike went, oh, it's okay. I presented the song to Clive Davis, and he went, oh, it's okay. And I'm thinking, what is in the water? Yeah, that people didn't hear that song. I know. It's crazy. Top five hit number five was your first big hit as a solo artist. And, yeah, and uh, I always I always give uh, credit to Stevie Nicks for that. She was very generous. That was she was on the top of the world. And I I got the job as the opening act for Fleetwood Mac just as Rumors came out. Wow! So I call it the Rumors Ride. And uh, <laughs> we went out into the world together, and I became friends with everybody in the band. And then she said to me one day. If you need a chick singer, let me know. I said, what? The biggest female singer in the world is... No, thanks. No, I, I don't really need that. No, never mind. <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding. You know, it's like... So it was amazing. A huge break for me. So the next thing up was Whenever I Call You Friend. And I said, I think we can make that a duet. And you guys have such a great blend as far as your voices come together. You were like, well, we need to record this together. Instead, he's like, hey, I have an opportunity. He told me this to record with Stevie Nicks. And of course, coming from Rumors, the oh, biggest sure. album, even now, you know, sure. you look back and think, what a massive album. And I think it, it speaks to your character that you said, no, that's, that's cool. Some artists would have been like, well, no, we wrote the song together. We're going to perform it together. Well, I mean, you know, Stevie yeah. Nicks was Stevie Nicks in that moment. Whenever One of the greatest openings vocally of a song in pop at that time, for sure. My 
upbringing, one of the most important acts for me was Brian Wilson and the Beach Boys. Yeah. And so I, I always loved, like the intro to Whenever I Call You Friend, I always loved that challenge of trying to create intricate counterpoint melodies, you know, vocal, vocal things. Yeah, like in the song, Wouldn't It Be Nice? Absolutely. A big influence. Wouldn't It Be Nice was inspired, wasn't inspired by any one thing. Yeah. It was just inspired by my love for music, you know. I went to the piano, there was a tack piano sitting there on the on against the wall. So I started playing, I went, bom ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum I wrote the chord pattern. Yeah. I would have loved, had there been a cappella groups in those days, I would have loved to have been a part of one. You know, my dream is still to record it with, uh, with Kenny. We're not quite on the same page about the arrangement. <laughs> and, you know, when I perform it live, the audience gets such joy from the song, and yeah. that's more what I want to capture. Oh, yeah. Sweet love showing us a heavenly light. We've gotten to know Kenny really well over the last uh, four or five years, and he was so excited. I wrote this song. He's got Michael McDonald. He's thinking, because, of, of course, their collaboration, What a Fool Believes, mm -hmm. and, and, and writing some of those songs together. And he got punched in the stomach. He just felt yeah. like, gosh, okay, well, yeah. I, I was wrong. And then showed it to you and you gave him that that ray of hope, that light that like, yeah. okay, yeah, sure. you know, there's something here. And he said that that was a moment that meant so much to him. It was a beautiful idea. Yeah. Seems like Glee's done every one of your songs. They're still out there, yeah. Sweet love showing us a heavenly light. An important lesson as a songwriter. Do we have any songwriters out here today? This is an important lesson. When you know you've got something good, hang with it. Don't let it go because we're too easily influenced by other people's opinions. Yeah. And, uh, and you got to have, if it's, if it's in there and you can feel it in there, when you know you've got something good, hang with it. Thank you so much for watching. Leave us a comment about Kenny and Stevie and this duet. What are your memories of this 70s classic? Also, check out the Zenny frames from today at the link below. This is such a great brand. You're going to love your new Zenny glasses. Um, down the road, we're going to do another duet that Stevie Nicks was famous for with Tom Petty. Stop dragging my heart around. That'll come very soon. You can also get Kenny and Stevie's music and merch by clicking on the Amazon links in our description. If you like our content, subscribe to this channel to see more. Hit us up on Patreon for even more behind the scenes footage. Help us keep the music alive. We appreciate your support. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. Stay safe.